Hey everyone, I'm Darth Bryboy, and I'm going to review a play, and I'm also going to compare some things. This is my review of Cow on a Hot Tin Roof. It stars Scar Johansson. Damn, she's hot as hell. Damn, she's hot as hell. And the dude from Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter playing Rick. Yeah, I think it's the same. So, I have seen the 1958 Elizabeth Taylor film. And I love that. And let me tell you the plot of this movie. The plot is that it's about a uh, former football star who's in a small southern town who gets drunk, breaks his leg, and his father is coming over, and his father has cancer, and they're all worried he's going to die, and uh, we meet Scar Johansson slash Elizabeth Taylor's character, Maggie, who's this really bitchy kind of angry character who doesn't take any shit from anyone, hates uh, her sister-in-law's kids. So that's my sum up of the play. It's not a very good sum up. I apologize for that. Maybe if I redo this. But I guess I'm going to talk about uh, Scar Johansson as an actress and what I've seen. The very first movie I saw her in actually was Spongebob Squarepants the movie. Which is kind of funny. And I thought she did a really good job as a voice actress. And it kind of makes me wonder that she must have been, what, like 13 when Spongebob came out. And I'm wondering if a 13-year-old girl who's in middle school is going to really watch something that's made for 7-year-olds. So, kind of wondering about that. Um, But ignoring that. I've seen a lot of different Scar Johansson movies. I've seen Iron Man 2 and The Avengers, which I loved. I love her portrayal of Black Widow. If you haven't seen my DeviantArt page and the YouTube homepage, which I wouldn't be surprised if you're watching this from there, then I got this Black Widow border around it. Or, like, I made so many freaking Photoshop Black Widows. Like, I, I'm in love with Black Widow. I don't love her character. I really like Scar Johansson. Um, I saw it in Lost in Translation, which is one of my all-time uh, favorite films, although there were one or two things in that film that annoyed me. Sorry if I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, one, it was rated R, and it said nudely, and I only saw Scar Johansson's ass. Like, in a, uh, in a see-through... Bikini bottom, I know. That's saying, like, well, that is the most immature reason or disappointment in a film ever, but I'm a 17 year old who has a major celebrity crush on ScarJo, so disappointing. Also, no freaking montage to turning Japanese. That is bullshit. You're in Tokyo, have a montage of that song. Fifth film is The Prestige, which not as really strong female character like uh, Black Widow, but she has a spunk or an attitude like that fuck you, I want to do what I want attitude that she has had in the event in Iron Man 2 and the Avengers. Count Hot this, this play Count Hot to Roof, and the and maybe a little bit of Lost in Translation. Not in Girl with the Pearl Earring. Oh yeah, Girl with the Pearl Earring. I did a review of that. I did a two-part review of that. And I'm kind of regretting my review of it. Because that may have been a really good movie. Because there were aspects of that film I enjoyed. And I think my, uh... Looking back on it, I probably should have given it at least a 6 point... Maybe a 6 out of 10. Because the problem I have with that film was not Johansson's performance, because I did feel sympathy for her character. It's just that all these other characters were just so goddamn one-dimensional that it pissed me off. So, yeah, you want to see my rant or me being, like, not being real open-minded, then click on that review in the link. So anyway, I guess I'll like talk about, like, this is going to be a brief comparison between Elizabeth Taylor... And Scar Johansson portrayal of Maggie the Cat. Okay. I, I prefer Scarlett Johansson's portrayal 
more than Elizabeth Taylor. Because with Elizabeth Taylor, I felt like she was just being bitchy and an asshole because that's how she was. I really didn't have as much sympathy for her as I did with Scar Johansson. Uh, for example, when she's talking about Skipper, who is Brick's best friend, who was Brick's best friend and kind of maybe gay lover here and there, and she said she had sex with him, like that's, she seems like she's kind of getting at him and she's wanting to get at him because she's just angry and she wants it her way. <clears throat> with Scar Johansson, you kind of get that, but for me, with Scar Johansson, she just has this very she brings a lot of sympathetic elements and more humanity to Maggie the Cat. Like when you hear when she was poor and the only, she looked at these rich people like they have all the power and the only way she could really fit into that society was being a bitch. Was that it was a defense mechanism that she's hiding all this guilt and maybe internal anger with herself. But the only way she can uh hide that is with this bitchy fuck you attitude so and when she was crying and really in pain in the play halfway through maybe it's because I'm also a teenager as a major celebrity crush on Scarlett Johansson I wanted to hug her character and say it's okay it's okay it's okay I feel your pain I feel sympathy toward you I'm not sure if I brought this up or not but when she's talking about uh Rick's relationship with Skipper and saying stop being low with my husband and she's telling uh, the guy who was in Abraham Lincoln Vampire and Benjamin something other than I think that's his name like I think I could really feel like the like oh my god I am sorry I did this to you I feel really horrible for like making you lose your for like being a part of your lover's demise. I feel really sorry about that and I wish I could take it back but she can't really express it because she doesn't want to seem weak. She doesn't want to seem you know cowardice amongst these other rich people who want this plantation like she does and she's also a bit of a con artist too but it's like I said she's grown up her betrayal of it is that she's grown up in such a hell-like scenario that the only way she can really survive necessarily is to be this bitchy character is to be the manipulative you know you know what so I really did feel a lot of sympathy toward her character now I'm gonna go back with Elizabeth Taylor now Elizabeth Taylor I thought she did a damn good job but I never really got a sympathetic feeling. Maybe you were supposed to have sympathy towards this character, but with Elizabeth Taylor, I never really got it. Because most of the time, it seems to be just manipulating. And while I was kind of rooting for her and Paul Newman at the end, it was like, you're still like this total, you know one, you really, like this bitch, and you haven't given me really enough humanity or you haven't really shown much of yourself where I can feel sympathy for you like I said with Scarlett Johansson I really felt her like you know, like her pain like she has to be like this otherwise she's screwed or she thinks she has to be like this and I'm writing a little letter to her saying like I really really wanted to meet her oh yeah so it was like in the two front row. I was so close to Scarlett Johansson. It wasn't even funny. It was it was like I could touch her pretty much. And I just gotta go off on another tangent or a ramble or whatever the hell you want to call this shit. I just wanted to touch her like ugh, I just wanted to touch her because she her ass is really nice. And, uh, and like these fantasies, like these you know giant women fantasies like that, and it's just like. Like, seeing her on a computer screen or, a, or my television is one thing. Seeing the hot beauty in person and being that this close to her, you know, is another. Like, damn. I gotta thank my mother. Thanks, Mom. You did a great job. 
I was like, it was so close, I got to see her, it was like, wow, and she may have glanced at me once or twice, which was pretty cool, I gotta admit, that was very happy, I had this big freaking grin on my face halfway through, um, unfortunately I didn't get to meet her or get her to sign anything, because she had another performance she had to get to, and, you know, she had to take a break, you had to get prepped up for it. But I'm happy she told, like, the people that immediately, or the guy did. Because most celebrities, when they do that, when you meet the celebrity people, it's like, okay, like, okay, you get to meet these people, what about the main people I want to meet? You maybe have to wait one or two hours. And Scarlett Johansson was like, you know, these people really want to meet me, I hate to disappoint them, but right now I'm really tired. So, like, I really do respect Scarlett Johansson a lot more than I do any other celebrity. Like, I understand why people would like someone like Kim Kardashian or Lindsay Lohan, even. But for me, they're not really that. They don't seem that intelligent. They don't seem that, you know, down to earth. Also, when the play ended, Scarlett Johansson didn't walk out like they had, like, oh, like each person walked out. No. With Scarlett Johansson, it was like a unity thing. It's like she bowed with all the other cast members, like she was an equal. It doesn't matter how big of a star she was, she was an equal. I guess I should probably rate the play. I would give this play a solid 10, 9 out of 10. It's a really intense play. There's lots of emotion, there's lots of comedy. You know, it's freaking Scarlett Johansson. This thing ends in March. So if you're lucky enough to get tickets like I was, and really up close tickets like I was, then take your chance. Because Scar Johansson has got, you know, Captain America 2 and the Avengers 2 to make. So, yeah, maybe Iron Man 3, hopefully. Hey, I can always hope for her being in Iron Man 3. If she's not Iron Man 3, I always got the Avengers. There's Emma fan mail letter, which hopefully she'll reply to. Goodbye.